Sup Shooters, my name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we're going to be checking out a track from an act named No Consent, titled Bastard Nation, which is a song off the album titled Bastard Nation, and if we switch over to here, we have the track on the screen on Spotify, and we're going to be listening through this track from start to finish. Let's go, let's do this. Dude, the fluidity of those guitar parts. Clarity of the drums as well. Sick, man. Again, I dig it. I dig it. It's great stuff. Like genuinely, um, when I listen to this kind of stuff, I kind of reminds me of some of the some of like the rock and. Um, I'm not entirely sure what genre this is. So apparently this is melodic hardcore punk, which makes a lot of sense to me. Again, fantastic drum fills there, and it's nice just to have like the accompaniment stand up, you know, for, for the actual motif to stand on its own two legs like that without the vocals coming in is testament to the performance and the uh, composition. Yeah, so obviously we aren't a massive fan of the police, and that's fine. That's okay. Um, <laughs> um, really strong lyrics here. Um, I dig that. You know, obviously not for kids, but music doesn't have to be for kids. Um, I love the vocal fry in that performance, though. It's interesting. I think part of it, having the melodic nature of this kind of punk is that when you have those sort of more sort of throaty vocals, they stand out in contrast all with each other. It's interesting that you can have that much activity going on in those guitar parts, yet still not be distracted from the vocals. I think that's testament to like the panning of the instruments. But additionally, just the how good they are to listen to. You know, you don't even mind. You don't even mind that you're being distracted by stuff out on the sides. And there's a lot of space where the vocals aren't there for them to be able to, you know, sort of habitate. You know, lovely harmonies here as well with those chords. I'm wondering if those guitars, if there's two guitarists and they're doing like octave chords. No, just sorry, I know I'm interrupting a few times. It's simply just because there's a lot of stuff to point out. I really appreciate the fact that we're showing great vocal technique here because with this kind of vocals if you are if you don't have it quite right <laughs> you can really screw up your vocal cords so it sounds like we've totally nailed that part of it which is really good very hostile with those right hits Oh, having those guitars in the center field is enough. Oh, they automate the panning for that. Sorry again to interrupt. I, I feel bad because I mean, it's just, it's so quick. There is literally no filler. There are no points where you can go, oh, I can totally come in here and pause it. Um, that's a good thing, by the way, because the last thing we need in a genre like this is for there to be parts that are, to be blunt, boring. You know, it's really energetic, uh, intense music. And uh, it's, it's what you need is that to maintain that intensity to a point, you know. But yeah, just the, the way that that solo was voiced there was sensational. I really appreciate the fact that we took our time and didn't rush those notes. We had a similar kind of eighth note groove to what we're doing with a lot of the hi-hat and sort of ride cymbal hits. Um, yeah, smart stuff. <laughs> Dude, 
Dude, that absolutely slaps. And we just got that ending there. We're just letting it sort of sit there for a moment. Just, I think that's kind of beautiful. Just before we go into the uh, conclusion part, um, each of these tracks, just because you can't see it when I'm big, each of these tracks are about three to one minute f f 30, one minute 40. That, those are really short, but I kind of adore it because in this day and age when you've got people who um, have limited attention spans, having shorter tracks is a great way. It's kind of like, oh, it's only like, it's only 18 minutes. I could listen through this entire album in that time. And it's like, that's exactly what you want when you're a band. You want people, if you're going to release an album, you want people to be able to just sit there in one sitting and listen from start to finish. That's what you want. So I think that if they can put out the content and, and not the content, but if they can tell the stories that they need to with this music and play in a way that is meaningful and is coherent throughout an album, they've absolutely got a banger here. And it's no wonder they're getting attention on all of the tracks. That's so sick. I'm so happy for them, genuinely. But this is my uh, conclusion of my review of uh, the song titled Bastard Nation by No Consent off of their Bastard Nation album. Um, oh, dude, this track. What is it about? I think it's about people who are getting their rights taken away and they're getting stomped on and they're, like the police are overstepping their boundaries and stuff like that. And I, I, I can understand that, you know. I'm not going to pretend that over the last few years we haven't, and in certain parts of the world, we haven't had the police completely sort of eviscerate any sort of trust that we, the public can have in them, you know. Um, I completely understand why this music is made. I think it's really important. I think it's really important for people to talk about this stuff genuinely. Uh, I'm not saying this because I feel as if I have to. It's something that I'm actually passionate about. Um, you know, I, I think it's great. It's good subject matter. And the way that the guy sung it was so visceral and pissed off and direct and unrepentant that it completely sold it to me. He, you know, there weren't melodies in this performance. There were just, there was growling. And it was just, it was, it was, it was incredibly overbearing and almost suffocating. But at the same time, it's exactly what you want. And I, it's testament to the vocal technique again that all the words came through clearly. It's a polished performance. We have great technique. And again, I only say it mention this because I want these guys to have a future. And I know of vocalists personally who did this kind of stuff and they just can't do it anymore because they just completely screwed themselves physically, you know, uh, by not doing it properly. So that's, that's fantastic. I mean, the actual motif behind it was really catchy it was always moving there was occasional power chords and occasional octave chords like in intro parts but there was never a point where it slowed down you know it's a catchy memorable motif there i i really dig those melodies on top and it's just you had verse chorus and then like a couple of those and then a solo section and that's all you really needed in a track like this it just and it's the longest track on the album at three minutes ten i'm not sure if you're aware of this regularly i get sent stuff sent from certain parts of the world that are like seven minutes people don't have that much time anymore they don't have the time to listen to an album that's full of five to seven minute stuff unless they actually have the time to sit down and do it because you know if you're listening to stuff passively are you even listening to it that's that's another conversation for another day i'm not trying to say that people who listen to stuff passively aren't listening properly it's just yeah but but like for real like again at three minutes ten i think this is definitely worth people's time especially if they're listening wanting to listen to more of this kind of hardcore kind of stuff it's it's dope it's really good stuff genuinely again i'm not saying this because i feel like i have to it's it i mean it the, the but the actual performance behind it after the structure with the you know the verse chorus verse chorus you know we had one or two different motifs where like the the the, the guitar is the bass i don't really talk about the bass the bass was fairly subtle you know the bass i think rolled with the root notes for the most part we had the guitars you know we had the vocals on top of all that and we didn't really need much more than that i think especially with this form factor but especially also just um with the coloration of the melodies within within the guitar parts if we'd added another instrument in there it would have just been way too busy way too busy and i think that's part of why we made those guitar parts so colorful so melodic is because we were trying to make up for maybe having less instruments in the overall arrangement that was a smart idea you know it's something you can play live and it does require a lot of technical proficiency so well done to everyone for how tired they are that's not to sort of like throw any shade towards the drummer the drummer was absolutely exceptional you know i can tell he played those drums live fantastic chemistry with this the musicians it just sounded like that was all recorded in the same room and um, great sort of work between the ride and hi-hat cymbals, those tom the kick and snare game was phenomenal. And I think also when I listened through, um, when, I, when I listened through the situation with um, those fills, you know, those drum fills, how they just seamlessly tied ourselves back in and just would whoosh, 
they flew by man there was again there was constant movement throughout this track it was really important that we had this they absolutely smashed us and there wasn't a note out of place finally the production recording mixing and mastering um i'm glad that this was a really well recorded track in the sense that it wasn't like sterilized or like overproduced it you know you could tell they were playing their instruments you can tell it was a tight performance i don't think that you would have needed to have changed a thing I, I think that the vocals were recorded incredibly well and were nice and present in the mix. The bass, drums, and guitar were notched well in the frequency spectrum, and there weren't any sort of red resonances there. Nice bit of compression on some of the drum parts as well, so they slapped and also nice side chaining with the, with the bass. Um, the stereo panning as well, nice and wide with I think the two guitars on the side, the bass and the drums and the vocals in the center. Um, nice automation of the panning there with the lead guitar coming into the center for that solo part. You know, really smart move there. I, I definitely heard that. Um, so there's a bit of, you know, obviously a bit of, obviously there's a bit of studio production expertise here. Um, considering how it sounds, it sounds dope. Um, the limiting compression as well. Um, it was nice and loud without pumping or anything like that. There was dynamic range to this. You could have potentially gotten it quote unquote louder. I, I can tell they haven't necessarily pushed the LUFS to the roof or just to the ceiling, but I think that's really good. Because I think with this kind of music, if you had crushed it and those vocals had been too close to the guitar, the bass and drums, don't get me wrong, really nice and loud, really great to listen to, but also if you'd like slammed it, it would have been detrimental to the overall listening experience. So I'm glad that they showed some constraints in that regard. Um, overall, just a really fantastic first impression uh, with no consent. And that's effectively my review of this track, Bastard Nation by No Consent. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their very social medias and their Spotify page. Stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As you need the help more, ever more than, uh, as you need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I will catch you in the next review. Spot ends out.